What's up guys, Rick from DFS On Demand here with a tutorial for the NBA data visuals. So if you've seen any of the other data visual videos, this is going to be generally the same concept, but there's a couple of quirks for the NBA that I think are really cool. So it's, it's worth pointing out. Right now I have three different tabs which we'll go through. And what you're looking at right now is just something I'm calling the game logs. So this would be uh, generally pretty much the same as my raw data game logs from last season or from previous years, where it has all the pertinent information for fantasy scoring, player salary, points, you know, the five main categories, minutes played, all that good stuff. Um, a couple things to note here. Right now I'm looking at DraftKings scoring. Um, you can flop back and forth between FanDuel and DraftKings and you see that everything updates. Or if you hold control and, and select something, it, it selects both of them. So now I'm showing both DraftKings and FanDuel. So you'll see guys will have, um, they'll have two lines in here. So Anthony Davis, October 26th. This one here is his DraftKings game. This one here is his FanDuel, FanDuel game. So we'll just go back to DraftKings. Um, a couple of things that I think are, are really handy for the NBA is we have home and away here. So if you really only wanted to see players home games for whatever reason, you could do that. If you only wanted to see Houston Rockets home games, you could do that. If you only wanted to see James Harden's home games, you could also do that. Here's James Harden's home games and we'll go chronologically here. So there's the last one, which I think is pretty cool. Um, we can back out of this just by clicking the clear selections button. Maybe we will only want to see everyone within the last, uh, I don't know, call it a couple weeks of the season, right? Different times of the year. So here we've got um, the best draft, the best draft Kings performances is since March 20th to the end of the season. I've got uh, minutes played, which I think is important for, um, for basketball, which we'll talk about in a second. But I've also got how many points they've scored, and I've also got field goal attempts and fantasy points. So what I think is handy for the NBA would be something like this. So we can pick any range during the course of the season. Here's basically, you know, a few months in the middle of the season. And now when you're looking at rostering players, you can say, okay, I'm considering rostering a point guard against the Lakers. How have point guards against the Lakers done recently and we can easily do this and we can sort it chronologically and here are all the game logs in one second for point guards against the Lakers and we can look through this and be like wow okay well um, the Lakers stink at covering point guards which is something that we knew and maybe we, we want to take this even deeper and we want to say okay and then just give me guys who um, you know who played at least 20 minutes and we can do that so now we're looking at this, and the game logs are pretty astounding, honestly. Anyone who plays 20 minutes against the Lakers, any point guard who plays 20 minutes against the Lakers, uh, essentially hits, geez, five or six times value. I mean, that's how bad they were against that position this year. Um, but I think that's really interesting. And maybe, maybe we also want to say, okay, and they have to take at least 10 shots. So we can do that. It probably doesn't change much if you're playing 20 minutes, but you get the idea here. You can continue to delve deeper into this and very easily grab the game logs for the situations that you're looking for on a nightly basis. Um, finally, if we really just want to see, um, let me clear some of these out. Maybe we just want to see all of one player's game logs. Well, here's Russell's. Okay, so here's Westbrook's, all his game logs. Um, you can go through and, and find those pretty easily. Actually, I'll probably do something like this, like... Uh, Pat Beverly. So Pat Beverly is a guy who played a ton of minutes down the stretch, but maybe we want to see, okay, how does he do when he plays uh, 32 minutes or more? And now this is a much smaller subset of his season. Um, so if we knew he was getting a lot of run recently, we could kind of target this. Or, or if guys who are coming off the bench based on injury who are playing 18 minutes, you know, maybe we can pull up the games where you know, they played 25 or more and see how much production they had in those games. So those are some scenarios for the NBA that I think are going to come in handy quite a bit. Going to the next tab here. Um, I'll go to player scoring calendar. And you know what? I actually might skip this and come back to it because that's probably a little more 
complex than, <laughs> than I wanted it to be. But here's, um, here's the player profile tab. So here's a really good way to look at one specific player. So let's go back to Russell. And this is his entire season. And what we're looking at here in these green blocks are um, his fantasy performances. So that was 74, uh, 74 DraftKings, I'm sorry, FanDuel points that night. And the black line in the shaded area are his salaries. So we can see how his salaries are trending, how his point production is trending. And of course we can, you know, section this off for any part of the year. Okay, we can just take this window. And okay, now we can see maybe how Russell's doing in the last 10 games and maybe make our decision based on that. And if you notice, I've got all these meters here for average fantasy points, average salary, and then, you know, the big five um, scoring categories along with minutes. So we can, as I change the date range, you're going to see that information change as well um, and how, they're average, how the player's averaging over that course of time. So if you're seeing a player's minutes trend up or his, um, you know, shot attempts trend up, his points trend up, whatever it might be, it's kind of a really handy tool to do so. With the NBA, there's a lot of games. So what you can actually do, a little tip here, is if you, you can expand this, there's something called focus mode. So I can click this, and now I have a much, uh, a much better view of what's actually happening here. Um, especially, you know, this doesn't come into play too much for the NFL because there's only 16 games. But um, for baseball and for, you know, the NBA where there's, there's more action, more games to be played, uh, you can focus in on the specific report that you're looking at. And then finally, I'll go back to that player scoring calendar. And this is something that I kind of started one night and it's still evolving. This will probably change a ton of times. But um, what I wanted to do here was to be able to compare salary and fantasy performance over time and also against their teammates. So basketball in nature is a very team-oriented sport. Baseball, not so much. Baseball is an individual sport. The batter is up there by himself. Um, he's in the field by himself. The pitcher's on the mound by himself. Basketball is much different. Basketball is 100% a team game, and your teammates impact your fantasy performance quite a bit. So that's what I'm trying to show here. So um, first, let's start with we'll pick a player, and um, we can go from there. Let me find somebody who would be good for this. Let's do, oh, let's do Dario. He played a lot of games last year, right? Um, so here's Dario Saric's season. And on the right-hand side, we have his fantasy production. So we can hover over any spot, see his salary, how many fantasy points he scored, the opponent. Um, again, of course, we can narrow the range here, right? We can see just a, a specific subset of the season. And then on the left is his salary uh, trend. So you can see towards the end of last season, and I'll show you more in a second, um, Dario's salary jumped a ton. And I mean, his production went up pretty, pretty high as well, but it was at a very high cost. So I thought that was interesting to see. More than that, though, I, I want to use this tool to look at it from a team perspective. So for example, let's stick with the Sixers. And I know that Joel Embiid played his last game of the year something like the end of February. So I'm just going to go to March 1st. And this is good for injuries. This is good for uh, mostly injuries, suspensions. When guys aren't on the court, how did the rest of the team fare? And who benefits, right? So like if John Wall gets hurt, who benefits? Does Bradley Beal get more shots? Does Ramon Sessions as his backup get take all all that play? Like, what happens? So this tool is is what I'm trying is what I'm trying to figure out here. So with Embiid out, let's just look at centers, forwards, and power forwards for the Sixers. And this is for the uh, stretch run down the year last year. So you can see on the left hand side. At the top there, Dario was the biggest increase in salary. He was always uh, basically the most expensive guy out of this group. And on the right, you can make this a little bigger. Uh, kind of hard to see because they're all the same color. But um, actually, let me back out of that. It was easier to see without it. So this gray at the top is Dario here with 51. So you can see he was basically um, one of the higher performers. And 
let's just do, we'll do Dario, we'll do Joel, we'll do Rashawn Holmes. That way we can get some of that other stuff out of there. You can see Okafor uh, basically lost favor, lost minutes, was terrible. But Rashawn Holmes is this dark line. And you can see that he actually had a really nice run towards the end of the season. He had a couple spikes of games. Like there was a 53-point performance. Here was a 41-point performance. Um, and you can kind of see here's the fantasy point split between those three guys. So if you're looking at it from a, a, a total standpoint, um, Holmes was 41% of the production out of these three guys. And Sarich was 45, and they were essentially, what, $1,000 difference every night? So maybe Holmes was um, a much better play. Uh, now, this is a tool that I plan on tweaking quite a bit, but I plan on using it to see these types of trends, when players are off the court and which teammates benefited the most. So that's what I'm looking to accomplish here. This will probably be a tool that will be very fluid. Speaking of changes... A lot of this is probably going to change, and hopefully for the better. My goal is to continue to improve these all the time and add more things, add more stats, add more reports to look at. But I want to do that with your help. So what I'm asking for is your feedback here. If you use this tool, give me a shout. Tell me what you like, what you don't like, what you'd look to add, how else this could be useful for you. Because this is really version 1.0. And I just want to continue to make this um, a better and better tool. So you can tweet me. It's at DFS on demand or email me through the website. And I'm happy to discuss. I'll, I'll respond quickly um, to all of your feedback. So there you go. Hope you enjoy this for this coming season. And I will talk to you guys soon.